So now that we have our data hub created, what's next? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our first iteration of ingest, curate, and access. And this is the pattern that we're going to use anytime we're building a data hub with the MarkLogic Data Hub framework. And it's meant to be an agile pattern. So we'll ingest data from our sources, we'll curate it to make it more valuable to help us meet those data service requirements, then we build those data services to access data from the hub. And we iterate. Every time we need to add and meet a new requirement, we ingest, we curate, and we build our data services that access that data. Okay, so should we start by building a schema? Now that's a good question, and if you're familiar with some of those older technologies, maybe that's where you would have started. But that's exactly what we're trying to eliminate here because that's a very rigid and painful and timely, costly process. So with our approach, and because the MarkLogic Data Hub is flexible, you can load the data from those different source systems, which are coming in in a lot of different shapes and sizes. You can load them as is. You do not have to declare that schema up front. Okay. Um, so how do we get the data in then? So what we'll start by doing is creating what we call an entity. And an entity is some sort of business object that's relevant to our customer. And in our case, that entity is a company. And then once we've created that entity, we can then create input flows to bring the data in from various sources and get it into the MarkLogic Data Hub. All right, let's get started. All right, so follow along with me and I'll show you how to do it. So here we are back in the quick start where we've just created our hub. And what we're now gonna do is create an entity, create a few input flows, and load some data to our hub. So let's start by clicking on Entities. And if you've let your quick start idle for a while, as I have done here in this example, you'll get prompted to select your hub and reauthenticate. And that's no big deal. That's just a security thing to log you out in case you don't manually log you out. So let's go ahead and click Next. I'm going to click on my local environment again, and I'm going to authenticate again with my admin user. Now that I'm reauthenticated, I can start to build out my hub. And the first thing I'm going to do is create that entity. So to create a new entity here in the interface, I'm going to click the little wrench icon and select New Entity. And we're going to give our entity a name. And because we're working with company data, we're going to call this entity Company. And then we're going to go ahead and click Save. We don't need to do anything more at this point in order to get our data in. As we start to curate our data, we may come in here and start to add more model to this entity definition by defining properties. And we will do that, but we don't have to do that right now. So let's go ahead and click Save. And when we get asked if we want to update the indexes in MarkLogic, well, we didn't really do anything that requires an index update because we didn't model any properties for this entity. So let's just go ahead and say no. And now you can see that we've got our new company entity defined. We can move it around. We can grab it with our mouse and expand that. And as we need to later on, we can go back and edit this to add more model to it. Now that we've created our entity, we can create flows that are associated with this entity. So next, let's go ahead and click Flows. And we're going to create some flows for our new company entity. So over in this left-hand column, let's expand that entity. And we're going to create an input flow to let us load data into our hub. So let's go ahead and click the plus button here by our input flow. And we're going to give this flow a name. Now remember, we've got two different sources of data. We've got a CSV file coming out of a relational database table that has information about Fortune 500 companies. And we've got another CSV file representing an export from a different relational database table that contains information about other companies that are not found in the Fortune 500. And if we look at each of these different data sets, you'll notice that the data is similar in that it's all data about a company, 
but the shape of that data is different because they came from different databases. Those databases had different schemas and models, so they don't look the same. But that's okay. We're going to bring them both into Mark Logic into our hub without defining any schema. But what we will do is create an input flow for each of those different data sets. That way they're organized and that will become helpful to us a little bit later on when we start to curate this data. So right now let's create an input flow to load the Fortune 500 data. So I'm going to call this Fortune 500 and all the other default settings are applicable here. So let's go ahead and just click Create. Now that we've created our flow, we can configure the flow. And the first thing we're going to do is point to where the data is that we wish to load. So I'm going to click here on the folder at the top in order to go back a directory because the default folder we get placed into is the folder where our hub is at. But our data is actually one folder back given the structure that I created on my desktop. And we're then going to click on the data folder. And for this first one, the Fortune 500 data folder. And we can see that that's where our CSV file for that data set is located. We're then going to expand the general options configuration here. For what we're loading, we're dealing with a comma separated value data set. So the input file type is not documents. Documents would mean something like XML or JSON. Instead, we need to change that input file type to delimited text for this particular data load. We're also going to want to organize the data in some meaningful ways inside of our hub. And collections are a great way to do that. The default for collection naming when using the Data Hub framework is to have a collection for the entity name company, a collection for the input flow name, Fortune 500, and then just a general collection or tag on this data to represent that this was loaded as an input flow. We also have permissions and it's important to set permissions on your data to dictate what roles can work with that data and for our purposes here in this example the defaults are just fine. What I would like to do is control the identifier that gets created for the resulting documents. And in MarkLogic, that's what we call a URI, or Uniform Resource Identifier. It's kind of like the concept of a primary key in a relational table, where that primary key identifies a row in the table. In MarkLogic, the URI identifies a document in the data hub. So I like to preface my URI strings with the name of the entity. So I'm going to use slash company slash as the prefix for my URI string. And because we are creating JSON documents, I'm going to end the URI string with a suffix of, of dot JSON. And everything else in the defaults is perfect for our example here. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom. I'm going to click Save Options, and then I'm going to click Run Import to bring this data into our hub. And you can see when I start this import process, I get some messaging here in the interface. And really quickly that data load ran and I get a message here that says the job has finished. So let's investigate what the result was. First off, if I want to look at the result of a job, I can go over here to the Jobs tab and I can get some status information about the jobs that we've ran. This information is coming out of that Jobs database which was created as part of our hub installation. And here we can see that my flow finished and if I look at the output I can see that in fact we created 500 records all 500 of those records committed, uh, took two seconds to execute. So all in all, things are looking good here on the Jobs tab. But the real proof, of course, is to look at the data which should now be in our hub. So let's explore our hub 
by clicking on Browse Data. And here you'll see that the data that we're browsing is in the staging database. And in our Data Hub approach, what we do is we load the raw data as is, and it gets placed into staging initially. And then as we curate it to better meet our needs for our data services, that data will get moved from staging into final. So when you're new to this, just remember, if you're wanting to look at the raw data that you loaded from an input flow, go look at the staging database. If you want to look at data that you're curating through harmonization, go look at the final database. All right, and what we can see here is a bunch of JSON documents, 500 to be exact, each document representing a company in the Fortune 500. And you can see that URI string that we defined through our configuration. Let's click on one of these documents to look at what it contains. And what we see here is a fundamental concept with a MarkLogic data hub. And that concept is that the Data Hub framework creates for us an enveloped document pattern. You can see this JSON property here at the root is called envelope. That is a wrapper around the whole data. And then there are different sections of the envelope, like headers, triples, and then the core data itself that we loaded from our source is modeled in the instance section and then lastly, we have attachments. These other sections of the envelope can be very useful to us depending on what our requirements are. So for example, if we had a requirement for compliance reasons that we had to maintain strict data governance and understanding of the provenance and lineage of our data, we might choose to insert that provenance and lineage data into the headers plugin as JSON. And the way we could do that kind of thing is through our flow configuration. So one more key concept, we talked a little bit about entities. We've seen that entities can have flows associated with them. And flows have plugins associated with them. So for example, looking here at the configuration for my Fortune 500 input flow, I can see various plugins, which are just modules of JavaScript code that we can manipulate to control that section of the envelope. So for example, if I wanted to track provenance and lineage information in the header, I could click here on the headers plugin and go in and manipulate what gets returned from this plugin and build out the content that I wish that section of the envelope to contain. We'll get a chance to work with some plugins as we start to curate our data. But for right now, what we need to do is get that second source, that second shape of company data into our hub. And to do that, we're going to repeat these steps. We're going to create another input flow under our existing company entity and configure it to load that data. So let's do that. Let's go over here to the left on input flows and click the plus button. And let's give this flow a name. And I'm going to be, you know, very descriptive here. I'm going to call this other companies. And again, all of the default settings here are good for our purposes. So let's go ahead and click Create. Now here I can see my flow. And if we look at this flow, I'm just going to refresh my browser um, so that I, I don't see the submissions from the form on the other flow. Uh, it's identical to the last one. It's a completely separate flow. We just need to configure it in a very similar way. So just like before, we're going to find where we have that data stored. And this time, we're going to point to the other company's CSV file. And just like before, we're going to expand the general options here. And we're going to set the input file type to be delimited text. 
And you'll notice that the collections are slightly different because this is a different flow. And specifically now, the, the adherence of this concept of collections is really important because all the data that we loaded from the first load, that Fortune 500 flow, it has some collections in common with this, but there is one that's different, right? The data that we loaded in the last run is in a collection called Fortune 500. The data that we're loading here is going to have its own distinct collection called Other Companies. And that's going to be useful if we want to do certain things to this data that we might not wish to do to the Fortune 500 data. All right, permissions we can leave as default. And we're going to use the same naming pattern here, um, slash company slash and dot json as the suffix. Let's go ahead then and scroll down to the bottom here, save our options, and run our import. And when it finishes, just like before, we see the status report here. And we could go look at the status of the job through the Jobs tab. And if we looked at the output here, we'd see, okay, this flow ran. And again, there was 500 records in this data set um, and all 500 of those committed. And if we go out and we browse the data, we can see that we've got the new data in there. And this is what I'm talking about with collections. Um, this interface that we have here to explore our data actually exposes that collection data to you. So if you wanted to just look at the data from the first load, you could constrain based on the Fortune 500 collection. If you just wanted to look at the data from the second load, you could look at just the other company's collection. And of course, if you wanted to look at all company data, you could click on the company collection. Now, one thing to notice here is that the URI for the new data that we loaded, it looks a little bit different. And that's because by default, when you ingest data from CSV, it takes the first column and the value of that column and it includes it in the URI. And that's done because oftentimes the value of that first column is representative of the original primary key from the relational table. Um, and, and what we see here, though, is that our first set of data, the Fortune 500 data, actually had the number where that company is in the Fortune 500 as the primary key. And in our second set of data, the first column in that data was actually the company name. And so what we get in that data load is the company name. And if it had spaces, for example, in the name, um, then it's going to be a URL encoded representation of that. But either way, we've now got both shapes of data into our hub. And we can see that second shape of data here in the enveloped document. All right, let's lastly go back to the dashboard here. And what you'll see is that we've now got some data in our hub. We've got 1,001 documents in our staging database, one in the final, and 1,002 in our jobs. And what we're looking at here really is the data that we loaded is now in staging. So that's 1,000 documents. That one extra document is actually our entity we're persisting the definition of our entity into the database. And it goes into both the staging and the final database. And that's why we see one document over there in final. And as we go forward into our next video, what we're now going to do is take that data from staging, curate it in a way to better enable us to meet our data services, and that data will then get moved from staging into final. So come with me and I'll show you how to do that in our next video.